To determine the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the vectored valued function, we determine the limit as t approaches negative 2 of each of the three components of the vectored valued function r of t. And now we need to consider each of the three limits. For the x component, we have the limit as t approaches negative 2 of e raised to the power of t plus 2. The domain for the function e to the power of t plus 2 is all reals, indicating we can determine the limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us e raised to the power of negative 2 plus 2, which is equal to e to the 0, which is equal to 1. So now we know the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the vector valued function r of t is equal to a vector in which the x component is equal to positive 1. And now let's consider the limit of the y component. We have the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the quantity t plus 2 divided by the quantity t squared minus 4. Notice the denominator is a difference of squares, and if we try to perform direct substitution to determine the limit, we get the indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0, which indicates we could apply L'Hopital's rule, but because the denominator is factorable, let's try the technique of factoring. The given limit is equal to the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the quantity t plus 2 divided by the factored form of t squared minus 4, which has a factor of t plus 2 and a factor of t minus 2. Notice the irrational expression simplifies. t plus 2 divided by itself simplifies to 1, indicating the given limit is equal to the limit as t approaches negative 2 of, be careful here, the numerator simplifies to 1, so we have 1 divided by the quantity t minus 2. And now we can evaluate the limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us 1 divided by the quantity negative 2 minus 2, which is 1 divided by negative 4, or negative 1 fourth. And now we know the y component of the vector is negative 1 fourth. And now we need to determine the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the z component. Once again, if we try to perform direct substitution, we have the indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0. Let's go ahead and check this. If we try to substitute negative 2 for t, in the numerator we have 2 minus 2 e to the power of 0 all over the square of negative 2 plus negative 2 minus 2, which does give us the indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0. To evaluate the limit, we could try to factor the denominator, but nothing will simplify out like it did in the previous limit, and therefore this time we'll apply L'Hopital's rule, which means the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the given function is equal to the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the function in which we differentiate the numerator and denominator of the original function. The derivative of 2 minus 2 e to the power of t plus 2 is equal to the derivative of 2, which is 0, and then minus the derivative of 2 e to the power of t plus 2, which requires the chain rule. The derivative is going to be negative 2 e to the power of t plus 2 times the derivative of t plus 2, which is just 1, divided by the derivative of the denominator, which is the derivative of t squared plus t minus 2, which is 2t plus 1 minus 0, or 2t plus 1. And now we no longer have the indeterminate form of 0 divided by 0. We can determine the limit by performing direct substitution. Subbing in negative 2 for t, we have negative 2 times e to the 0, all divided by 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Simplifying, we have negative 2 divided by negative 3, which simplifies to 2 thirds. This gives us the z component of our vector. So now we know the limit as t approaches negative 2 of the vectored valued function is equal to the vector with an x component of 1, a y component of negative 1 fourth, and a z component of 2 thirds. I hope you found this helpful.